Rebecca and Uzadima, you were both speaking on the panel on inclusive growth through anticipatory science. So first, let me ask you, Rebecca, what was your key message? I think the key message is coming from the technology sector um, is really that there is a lot of innovation happening on the ground. It needs to be respected as an industry um, and that um, African entrepreneurs and startups um, do have um, real innovation and need to be supported. Real innovation and supported, can you give me an example, perhaps from your own experience? Oh my goodness, there's so many examples. Um, you know, for instance, the uh, young man in Uganda, 24 years old, who developed a, um, a capture, like a, a, a test for malaria um, that, can, that can be reusable and doesn't require blood. Um, you know, that's the sort of innovation that, that we're developing on the continent. But so many times, um, the innovation that comes, because it doesn't come through traditional means, it doesn't come through universities, it doesn't come through, um, you know, the, the, the scientists as we know them, is not respected as innovation. Um, and so we're, we're, it's really important that, um, that a different image of the scientist, um, you know, and I think this is, that's a great opportunity for Jesna um, to present what a scientist looks like in a, a very different definition of that scientist. Interesting. Uzodinma, what was your key message? Yeah, I think uh, in a way similar to Rebecca's, but, you know, I speak a lot and think a lot about the relationship of science and culture and uh, this idea that we really shouldn't be separating the two, that a lot of our inquiries, our scientific inquiries, are culturally conditioned, which is to say that the stories that you form, and if story creates culture, will also push what you're curious about and what you then decide to research about what, um, how money flows to that research, and then who is involved in that research. And so I think if we, if we start from that point, then we'll be able to think about how we transform the methods and modes of inquiry to be more inclusive and to also tackle maybe some of the more pressing issues that we face as a planet. So what you both seem to be telling me is that this is going to be a very different approach uh, than previous I I I initiatives on inclusivity? We hope so. I mean, that's the hope. If, if our message is heard, right? Because we're just one panel on, uh, you know, there's a, there's a very large conversation. Um, and if we just take our panel and our discussion in isolation, um, then that really doesn't take us anywhere. We, we haven't made any progress. Yes, people that assisted, that were there at the panel, um, participated, would have heard the message, but then it doesn't become um, a, a message of Jezda. So we're, we're really hoping that um, the conversation that we had um, will, will filter through and we'll be able to see it in, in the, the, the general conversation. Uzudinma, how do you see the role of Jezda as trying to build a bridge between uh, the global north and the global south? I mean, I think it's important. I think it's important that we have these different, these different gatherings, these different forums for discussion. I think it's really important that within these discussions and within these gatherings that we consider who is able to be there and how that person is able to be there. Um, I also think that it's, it's really important that we, we push, um, push ourselves, I think, as participants in these discussions and organizers of these discussions uh, to be maybe a bit more radical. And I, I say that just because I think the challenges that concern everyone, whether you're from the global north or the global south, uh, are not going to be met or uh, uh, explored or we're not going to find the solutions to them with the same orthodoxy of before. And so this idea of diplomacy on one hand is really important because you do need to reach out, but it can't be diplomacy in the way that diplomacy has always been done, where people say a lot of things but don't necessarily really mean what they say. There are a lot of buzzwords. Inclusion can be one of them. So what sort of radical thinking would you be looking for? Well, I mean, I think it's interesting because it came up on the panel, and I think one inclusion is about first, uh, and Rebecca said it, it's who, who do you consider to be a scientist? And as much as we can say that everybody's looking for diverse 
you know, people to be educated in science or scientific pursuits and all that sort of stuff. The truth is when it comes down to it viscerally, a lot of the times people will go with what they know and what they like. And so if inclusion is to be not just a buzzword, then you have to really think differently about who you bring to the table, number one. And two, you have to think about how historically you've told stories about who's been at the table. And this is something that has come up in, our, in, in the panel and I think should come up in more situations, which is the people who generally get credited with scientific discovery you know, are, tend to be white men who went it alone and because of their sheer brilliance discovered something that changed the world. We all know that that narrative doesn't make any sense. Like whether you are Einstein in, in a lab or, you know, discovering some vaccine or whatever, there are teams of people, often times for some of our major discoveries, there were people of color, there were black people um, involved in these things who just don't get any credit. And therefore, the, who looks like, who a scientist looks like how science itself as a, as a method of, of inquiry exploration, the process, you know, that cuts out a whole lot of people from the story and prevents people from being imaginative in terms of what inclusivity actually means. Thank you. Let's hope that inclusivity is made concrete and it's radical in the next uh, JESDA meetings. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.